Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Wesley. Wesley, you prepared something today. Yeah. So, we all know authentication and secrets, usernames, keys, uh, it's so yeah. annoying. <laughs> so, you have your whole security in place and then you still need to use passwords for your Azure function to authenticate against storage. whatever. Storage, uh, key vault, SQL. It's so annoying. So, Microsoft came up with something, mm -hmm. which is managed identity. Yeah, I uh, love managed identities. It's fantastic. So it was already a bit discussed in episode five. So mm -hmm. check it out if you haven't. Um, but I would still want to discuss it because now we have something to do with SQL also being able to do that. Nice. So, which is really cool. So just a bit, uh, small res uh, res resume. Um, we have got the old authentication by key, yeah. which is just, I have my key could also be username, password, that kind of thing. Um, and you authenticate against the service you want to do. Mm -hmm. In this case, you've got your Azure resources, which is the Azure function, and you've got your own key vault, yeah. which is fine. You don't want that. You want to authenticate when you have the permission to do so, not True. when you have the key or password. So what Microsoft did, it did something with AD and a managed identity. Yeah. So what it is, it actually gave an identity to the service. So your Azure function is not like, oh, this is the name of the function, but it actually has an identity around it, uh, which basically has its own permissions. You, know, you can give it whatever you want. So you can say to Keyvault, okay, I've now got my Azure function, and now it has permissions on your side as well to do maybe a secret get and list. Yeah. That would be really nice. So this is what it actually does. So you've got your own Azure function, you configure it that it uses the managed identity setup. You say you have an identity and you configure on the key vault side that it is uh, able to call it. Yeah, and so use you it. assign a role under role-based access control, right? Yep. And then if I'm not mistaken, if we specifically talk key vault, yep. we have two access scenarios where you actually have access policies, which used to be the default way of accessing a key vault. Mm -hmm. And then you have the role-based access control, which is integrated throughout more and more services under Azure. Yep. That has also now been added to key vault, and that means that you could use managed identity yep. under those role-based access control. Yep. So you could give somebody a role of the possibility of reading secrets from key yep. vault, right? Yes. yes, that's true. So this is the setup how Microsoft does it. So if I go to Azure, and I go to my key vault, which has access policies. You can see my application, better talks, managed identity, which is an application. It doesn't know which application, mm -hmm. but if we go to our Azure function, which is right here, it has a part of identity right here. And you can turn it on, which yep. basically is the object. You can also, which is a cool new feature in preview still though, it has a, a Azure role assignments option, mm -hmm. which basically adds the option to do the uh, configuration of permissions on this part. You can give yeah. it contributor rights to do whatever. So you can give it contributor rights to a whole subscription, mm -hmm. a whole resource group, just a resource itself, and any kind of role of the uh, system uh, it has. So yeah. that's the role-based access uh, control, which is there in place. This is really cool. Really simple to configure it like this, and it will put it on the IAM on the other side as well. Yeah, true. Um, so in this case, I configured the Azure function, and it, when my application from the function in Azure will call the key vault, it will work. Okay. For now, I've got something local, which is the function again. I have something of a HTTP trigger, which uh, has a request. I'm not gonna use the request, but I'm just gonna call my configuration. And the neat part right here is the I configuration, which was implemented in ASP.NET Core, mm -hmm. is really cool because you don't have to know where it's coming from. True. You only have to know what it is or what the name is of the uh, the, the the value you want to retrieve. Yeah, and then and then even even more awesome, I think, is the fact that you can configure this at startup. Yeah. So somebody needs to configure it only once, and then after that, you can just inject it anywhere you need to. Yeah. And just use it to access configuration or secrets. Yeah, true. So if I go to the startup, that's actually the whole thing we're doing here. So I can configure app configuration. It says app configuration. Uh, it, it can be anything with configuration. Doesn't really have to do with key vault specifically or app configuration mm -hmm. or whatever. And in this case, I configure it as uh, with a key vault endpoint and the same setup with a token provider, key vault client, 
giving it the authentication callback, which basically is the key vault token callback. Just an easy setup of the client. And to add it to the I configuration, I need to implement the configuration builder with the add Azure key vault, which is already there. Yeah. Really simple. And I don't have to configure anything in my ARM templates if I want to, because you can use the reference option. Yeah, true. Um, in this case, I don't have to, because I can just configure my key vault itself. I can give it an extra secret, and it already has permission to access it. Yeah, true. To keep in mind, maybe you don't want to. Maybe you want to use the reference option, but yeah. to show both. So in this case, I have my permissions. I can go back to my function. I can give it a breakpoint right here. Doesn't really have to do actually because I can just retrieve it and return it. So I'm gonna start up Postman, and from Postman I'm gonna send a request to this function, and it will retrieve my value, which is my secret from Azure, and it will just return it. And you're going to show it on screen. And I'm gonna Your show secret? it on screen. Oh, my Ooh. secret! Ooh. <laughs> so I'm gonna start my function, which is gonna pop up. And I've got my API ooh, secret uh, URL right here. And we can just send a request. It's not starting up. No, it is. And that's my secret value. Oh, wow. It's a really secret value. It's a really secret value. And that's just a simple setup of retrieving all that stuff by my identity. One. So, so the only thing you configure, just to make sure that everybody understands, the only thing you configure is, here's my vault. Yep. And because of the managed identity credentials that you have, you have the permission to access that vault. Yep. So the only thing you need to specify is, go look over there and yep. see if you have access. Yep. And because of managed identity, Key Vault says, hey, I know you, come in. Yep. That's and, and the neat part is, uh, I'm running locally. Mm -hmm. but he knows who I am yep. and I configured that I have permissions to do something on the key vault. So it says, oh, all right, you're good to go. Good hey. luck. Hey, it's Wesley. I know that guy. Come yeah, here. Yeah, come here. <laughs> you're welcome. And it, it's a really neat part. So you can give permissions also to developers who can access it or shouldn't access it. So that, that's, that's really neat how it works. And this is with key vault. Mm -hmm. It's really nice with iConfiguration. But you want your whole infrastructure to work this way because yes. you can just do your identities, give it permissions, and you're good to go. Yes, because then, just like you said in the beginning, you want somebody to have access because of who or what they are, not mm -hmm. because they just happen to have an access key. Yeah, true. So what Microsoft did, is it is in preview, uh, it added the functionality to the SQL Server as okay. well. So I've got my other application right here. I'm going to stop this one. And I have just a default context below, which does some options and configuring uh, in the unconfiguring. It is Entity Framework Core in this case. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it has a connection, which is a SQL connection, just a normal string, only server and database. I give it the default Azure credentials again. I give it the, uh, the way of retrieving the token, which has to do with the database windows.net default. It retrieves it from there and it will fill it in in the access token. And that's your connection all done. And uh, again, if anybody's watching, where did you get database.windows.net? There is actually a list of all of the resources that support uh, authentication through managed identity, yep. where you could find what scope or what URL you need to use to make sure that you get an access yep. token for that type of resource, right? Yeah, true. You okay. can just get the overview, use what's there, and uh, you should be good to go. Also a good place to check what resource actually supports yes. identity, because it's not everything, but I think they're working on they're it. They're getting close. Well, they're actually, close. They're, they're pushing on making more and more services support this. Mm -hmm. um, in storage, that's actually pretty funny. In storage, you have queues and blobs who both support managed identity. Mm -hmm. But table storage is like kind of different, because it's actually Cosmos DB, but it's also under mm -hmm. storage. and then. Last week, I needed to find out, and apparently, a couple of days ago, it now should work with table storage as well. Oh, actually. So that's something wow. I'm going to check out somewhere nice, today or tomorrow. Nice. Uh, but it should work on table storage now as well. So that's okay. actually a good, plot, that, good plus. That sounds really good. So yeah, 
it's it's keep coming it keeps coming to other yes. resources which doesn't have it yet yeah um so yeah simple setup of the context and no secrets no passwords whatever and you can just uh, and then you set the access token on the connection right mm -hmm. but that's not something that's been added recently the the connect the access token on the connection that has been there for quite a while right mm -hmm. so they're reusing the old yeah. the old the old data sql client yep. connection uh, the access token that was on there you could just use that one and then it works yeah yeah they just added the package to there and the support for it so it recognizes the azure yeah. token retrieval way uh, but the system of connection and setup is actually pretty old it, yeah. it, it's already long there so yeah um all I need to do is, of course, I set up my migrations, updated <laughs> the database, but of course, of but course, that's not in this talk, right? Nope. <laughs> so I'm going to start it. It's going to retrieve the context. Oh, wait, I'm running the role, whole wrong application. I'm going to run the console in this case. It's going to retrieve the DB context. It's going to do a uh, to do uh, list to list and it should retrieve two items. I'm going to wait for it. Depending on whoever got access to your to-do list, there may, might be may, more. Maybe <laughs> my, it might be more, but I don't think anyone has, a <laughs> has permission because I used the identity <laughs> setup. That's a good thing. So there are two to-do lists, which is just some simple to-do subscription and a name. Yeah. And again, you have a connection string that only states server and database. Yeah. No usernames, no passwords. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Really yeah. simple. One good thing to see is you can force this setup of identity mm -hmm. because if you want to approach that way and use it uh, maybe you want to step off the old connection string setup yeah you can configure a sql database to uh, only use identity it will force it that way and nice. you won't have an option for connection strings again um, so i'm going to go to the spot where i have my sql database here which is the data server right here and this is the database i think it's on the server side it's going to be here and you've got the identity preview so you've got the system assigned manage identity the status is set to on mm -hmm. and that's all you need now it accepts all identities and it accepts the manage identity setup which is yeah, you're good to go. It's nice. just a click and it, and it works. But does this mean that it only supports currently system assigned managed identity or does it also support user assigned managed identity? Also user because I won't, wouldn't be able to log into it from my local application. Oh, sorry. Application. The, there, there's the, the difference between system assigned managed mm -hmm. identities where the managed identity is tightly coupled to the resource under mm -hmm. Azure mm -hmm. and then the user assigned one where you can have one um, identity that you use across multiple oh, applications. Yeah. Does it already support that one as well, or is it currently only for system assigned? It's, it's basically below as well. So you've got the user assigned ah. managed identity, and you can just that add your stuff right here. That works. Yeah. So both. Cool. That's really actually cool. Very nice because they were able to do this in the past, but then you needed to add the users in the yeah. SQL database as external users, and mm -hmm. then it was all it, it's, it's kind really of shady. Messy. Yeah. Right now, this looks like it's actually going to make sense out of all that configuration. It does. Cool. It, it really cool. No usernames, keys. I, I like it at least. So, to a more secure world every day. Mm. Right? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.